Hi, today we're going to talk about how to determine the hybridization of an atom in an organic molecule. And from that, we're also going to be able to see what the geometry about that atom is going to be. So when we look at a typical carbon atom, we will observe that it'll always have four bonds to it. And uh, that's what gives a, the carbon a neutral configuration, gives it a filled octet. But the arrangement of those eight electrons around the carbon is what's going to determine the hybridization. The hybridization depends on what I'm going to describe as the regions of electron density. So if we take a look at some sample organic molecules here, and what we're going to be doing is in each case we're going to be looking at just one of the carbons in the structure. So either one will have the same hybridization, but, but hybridization describes an atom. And so when we look at each of these carbons that I've highlighted, you can see that they have a different arrangement of electrons. So this first carbon has one, two, three, four regions of electron density, those four sigma bonds. And every time a carbon has four regions of electron density, it's going to undergo hybridization described as sp3. And that name is derived from the fact that all four hybrid orbitals, recall that a carbon has an s orbital and then three p orbitals. And this hybridization takes all four of those, of those atomic orbitals and mixes them, the s and all three p's, mixes them to give new hybrid orbitals. So the result, the result of this mixing is we start with four atomic orbitals, we're going to have four hybrid orbitals, and so we're going to get four sp3 hybrid orbitals. So it'll have four new orbitals, and each of these hybrid orbitals is described as an sp3 orbital. Okay, in our next compound, this carbon still has four bonds, but they're arranged differently. We have the double bond, and two single bonds, so we have only a total of three regions of electron density around the carbon. And such carbon, such uh, atoms, will undergo a hybridization described as sp2. And we call it that because to undergo the hybridization, we combine the s orbital with only two of the p orbitals. And that leaves one of the p orbitals unchanged, unhybridized. So it's still going to be a uh, look like a, a normal atomic uh, p orbital with the with the bell shaped curve uh, with the uh, dumbbell shirt uh, dumbbell shape excuse me so the result now if I mix these three uh, these three atomic orbitals I'm going to get three hybrid orbitals each of those hybrid orbitals is called an sp2 three sp2 hybrid orbitals and what's left over we also have one p orbital plus one p orbital that is unhybridized and looks like an ordinary p orbital. Okay, and then finally, uh, we have on our last example a, re, uh, a type of carbon that has now just a triple bond and a single bond. So this has just two regions of electron density. And as you might see the pattern that's uh, evolving here, in such cases, we're going to uh, undergo sp hybridization. And it's called that because we just mix the s orbital with only one of the p orbitals, leaving two p orbitals unhybridized. So the result of this hybridization is we will now, we, we, when we combine two atomic orbitals, we're going to get two new hybrid orbitals. So we'll have two sp hybrid orbitals. And how many p orbitals are left over? We're still going to have two p orbitals. Okay, so, so determining hybridization for an atom is simply a matter of counting up the regions of electron density. Those regions can be, as we've seen, a single bond or a double bond or a triple bond, and then it could also be a lone pair of electrons if you have that. That could count as a region of electron density as well. Okay, and so next I just want to look at what do you think the hybridization, is, uh, the, the geometry is going to be based on that hybridization, and for that we're going to rely on VSCPR, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, where we just want the uh, atoms, uh, the electrons, to be as far apart from each other as possible. So if we have uh, four hybrid orbitals, four regions of electron density, we're trying to spread out as much as possible, we're going to achieve a tetrahedral shape, a tetrahedral geometry, and I have a model on what that looks like. So this is a model of ethane, that first molecule. This is a CH3 and another CH3. And each of these carbons is sp3 hybridized, and each of them has a tetrahedral geometry. So uh, what's interesting about the molecule is I can rotate this. So actually, there's many different 
drawings I could have if I wanted to sketch this. But when we go to draw a tetrahedral carbon, we could draw two of the bonds in the plane that we would just draw as straight lines. And then the other two bonds are going to be one is projecting out towards you, and the other one is going to be behind the board or behind the page. It would be uh, hidden if the page were, were not transparent. So, um, so if we go to sketch this, let's see if we could do that. We'll, maybe we'll do this up here. If we go to sketch this, we could draw two bonds in the plane. Two bonds in the plane. This bond angle is about 109.5. So what is 109.5? That means just a little wider than 90. We didn't know what a right angle looks like. Make sure it's a little wider than that. And then where are the other two bonds? The other two bonds are going to be out in this region. One is going to be uh, coming out toward you. We draw that as a wedge. So the wedged bond means that it's projecting out away from the board and toward you. And then the dashed bond means that it's behind the board. So there will be a wedge and a dash on this carbon and a wedge and a dash on this carbon. They should be, they should be drawn close together because in fact when you're viewing it, oh, let's just look at this one carbon. When you're viewing it, you can see that they're eclipsing each other. They're exactly aligned. Okay, how about the, uh, the sp2 hybridization? When you have three regions of electron density, how do you get them as far apart from each other as possible? It's going to be a trigonal planar arrangement. It's going to be trigonal planar, so we're going to um, put them in the plane and have them as uh, about 120 degrees from each other. So this molecule is completely planar. Oh, I could draw on my carbon. Sorry about that. Okay, but remember what else we said about an sp2 hybridized atom is not only does it have these three hybrid orbitals, which it's using for its sigma bonding, but it also has a p orbital, that p orbital that was never involved in the hybridization. So what does that p orbital look like? Here's a model of this compound. So shown here, uh, if you could see these black bonds, these are the trigonal planar, the plane of the molecule. And what's represented by this green and blue um, uh, foam balls is, the, is one p orbital. So remember, we usually show a different color for the two lobes of the p orbital. So this is one p orbital, and this is the other p orbital. And what these two p orbitals are doing is they're sharing two electrons to form the pi bond. So the way we make a pi bond is by overlapping two adjacent p orbitals. So we need to show these p orbitals being perpendicular to the sp2 plane. So if I draw the sp2 plane in the board like we've done, now one half of the p orbital is sticking out and the other half is sticking back. So we could maybe tilt it just a little bit so we could see both halves and use that to do our sketch. So we could draw one lobe of the p orbital as a wedge and the other one going back and then a parallel p orbital on the next carbon and the other half going back. And then we want to show some kind of interaction between these because they're sharing two electrons and that's what our pi bond looks like. Okay, or another way that we could draw this is if we just took a different point of view of the same 3D molecule and said, okay, what if I held it on edge? Now I can see the p orbitals very nicely in the plane, but what happened to my hydrogens? Here's one hydrogen sticking out towards you. There's the other hydrogen pointing away. So my hydrogens now become dashes and wedges. So that's another great way to draw this molecule is you can show the p orbitals very nicely in the plane and we can overlap them to represent a pi bond. But now we would have my hydrogens, we have one wedge and one dash on each carbon. So in either of these drawings, hopefully what you can see is that the relationship between the p orbitals and the plane of the molecule, the trigonal planar um, sigma bonds, they're orthogonal, they're perpendicular to each other. So only one can be in the plane, the other one has to be perpendicular to that plane. Okay, and finally, how are we going to draw a triple bond? Well, the triple bond has uh, uh, two regions of electron density. If we arrange those linearly, then they are going to be as far apart from each other as possible. So these will be 180 degrees. So that part is easy to draw. So the carbon-hydrogen bond and the carbon-carbon bond and then the next carbon-hydrogen bond, those are all 180 degrees. Okay, and the two p orbitals that were not did not undergo the hybridization that's what we're going to use to make the two pi bonds 
So uh, how do we uh, how do we end up drawing those? How do we imagine those? Well, this is one model of what a triple bond can look like, and what I've shown here is in in silver we have the uh, the linear sp hybrid orbitals that we're using for our sigma bonds, and then in the green and yellow I have one set of p orbitals, p orbital here, p orbital here, and showing as a pi bond, and then the red and blue is another set of p orbitals. So p orbital here, p orbital here. So if you imagine the uh, like an x, y, and z axis about this uh, about the carbon atom, okay. If we use the x axis, if we use the p x to do the hybridization to make the sigma bonds, then it's still the p y that is unhybridized to form one pi bond, and perpendicular to that is the p z going straight out and straight back to make the second pi bond. So there's a lot of action going on because we have six electrons that are being shared between these two carbons. So we have to show them all. But if we're careful and we give ourselves enough room, we can, uh, we can show it all. So one set of p orbitals, this would be the py in the plane. So that's uh, first pi bond. And then the second pi bond is going to be the, p, the pz, uh, which is coming out and going back. So we could draw it as one half as a wedge and one half as a dash. And then over here, one half as a wedge, one half as a dash. And then again, carefully kind of connecting those in the top and in the back. And then we can have what our triple bond looks like. So, uh, so we, we're going to gradually build up. And so it starts by deciding what the hybridization is about each atom. And then understanding what that geometry looks like about that individual atom. And then bit by bit, we can build it up to draw more complex molecules in three dimensions.